So this presentation is um, going to be very, very useful if you're interested in any of this type of Tesla technology, tuning coils, analyzing coils, um, what are the different harmonics and this kind of thing. Um, uh, Dr. Adrian Marsh um, helped us out quite a bit at the 2019 uh, conference at the Hayden Eagles Lodge. That was the year Eric Dollard presented on the 20, or we demonstrated a 20 to 1 scale model replica of Colorado, the Tesla's Colorado Springs uh, magnifying transmitter. And um, in the demonstration building, um, Adrian was um, uh, just kind of I improvising with um, so some of the stuff because somebody who was working with us with that took the tuning unit. And so um, Adrian was able to improvise on the spot with his an uh, analysis methodologies to actually take one of our pulse modulators uh, for the MWO, do a slight little modification, and it was running those 20 to 1 scale model uh, coils. And they were doing other experiments, and uh, Haka says was there, were you there, Jeremy, or uh, Griffin in 2019? Not yet. And so we had a lot of fun, and but that's like you know doing real science behind the scenes of seeing how these things can kind of uh, come together. Um, in 2003, Adrian established his own self-funded, not-for-profit uh, research company called AMI Innovations, and he he'll show, share the uh, website with you, which I believe is going to be on the uh, uh, screen there at the bottom right of the slide. And when you go there, look at his work. It's absolutely beautiful, everything that he does. And, um, but his uh, primary research activity to date is the displacement and transference of electric power. Research into displacement of electric power attempts to understanding the underlying coherent mechanism of electricity, which appear to stem from the inclusive and interdependent relationship between the electric and magnetic fields of induction and their balance and equilibrium throughout the common medium. To date, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of as yet unreported research has been undertaken by Adrian and co-workers at AMI Innovations. And this is progressively being released in the form of, on, form of online posts and video experiments on his website. Displacement of electric power and associated theories and principles remain Adrian's primary research interest and work in progress. So please help me welcome Dr. Adrian Marsh. Great. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, before we get jump into these things, I want to kind of us to consider a theme of what Tesla coils are really all about, or what they are about for me anyway. If we take this piece of wire, we could characterize this wire relatively straightforwardly. Uh, at low frequency, we can use this piece of wire to connect things together um, in electric circuits, and at higher frequency, um, we can consider this as to be part of a transmission line, um, or we can um, use it as, a, as an antenna for a transmitter or a receiver. And we can characterize that quite easily. Um, there are still things not entirely we could characterize with that, but generally it's well demonstrated by electric circuit theory and by conventional electromagnetism. Now, this is a former. If I do this, and I wind our wire around like this, we've ended up with a coil, or a solenoid, let's say. Um, now, and the properties we know of this are different. If we look at circuit theory, you know we've got, we've got an inductor here. It has an inductance. Its properties are completely different to what it was when it was a straight piece of wire. And all we did is geometrically round it, uh, wound it around this. So that might have a core in it, it might be an air core, um, and that's going to affect its properties. So electromagnetism tells us it's a solenoid. And the transverse electromagnetic modes of electromagnetism, so the dielectric field, or electric field and electromagnetism, and the magnetic field together, that's well characterized. But we can go further with that. So, so in other words, if we consider another mode here, not just the transverse electromagnetic mode, but the longitudinal magnetodielectric mode as well, another transmission mode, then essentially now we have a Tesla transformer. It's not just a solenoid. 
It's a Tesla transformer. And that it, it becomes a cavity which can support a longitudinal mode. And we can talk about the relationship between the dielectric and the, med the, dielectric and the magnetic fields of induction. And it is that property, it's a single coil, but even so, as, as we learned yesterday as well from our other presenters, a single coil is a Tesla transformer um, because, because of those two distinctly different modes. And it leads to all of the exciting properties that we know about Tesla coils. Tesla, this is a legacy from Tesla, circa 1891, and he was really working with the Tesla magnifying transformer. We'll say a little bit more. I mean, we had some of that yesterday. I'm going to say a bit more. It's a resonant air cord transformer, if you want to characterize it in an easy way to say. Uh, high voltage, high frequency electricity. It can produce huge voltage, magnif huge voltage magnification. As you can see here, that is what's going on, or at least partly what's going on. Generators, there's a wide range of generators, spark, linear, impulse. Um, we had uh, uh, Hackersys was using a linear amplifier yesterday. It's not around. It's probably down there. But, but the, the big box that he had, that's a linear amplifier with an exciter, um, a tube-based. And um, Griffin also demonstrated a um, rotary disruptive generator the previous day as well as an example of a spark gap generator. Um, so there are many different power supplies. And... The power supply matters, and I'm going to come on to that as well. So it's not just the coil, the Tesla coil, the Tesla transformer is important, and it's linear and nonlinear electrodynamics. So, in other words, the, the type of experiments that we can do in electricity, and if we look at, if we take Eric Dollard's way of looking at electricity, in other words, quantity of electrification then that is the combination of the dielectric induction field and the magnetic induction field. And then, of course, the number of coils that you're going to have in your Tesla coil, whether it's a single, a two-coil, or three-coil, and they all have different properties. You take a single-coil Tesla transformer and you put it into coupling, whether it's direct with a wire or whether it's through magnetic coupling. Um, you put it into coupling with another coil, its characteristics change. A primary to a secondary, when you bring them close together, their characteristics change. And you need to utilize that for the best possible result that you're going to have for the purpose that you pick the coil for. So we do a short, we do an open, the same thing. It needs to be a very high impedance um, in the band of frequency we're interested. We put a load. Um, easiest load is to match it to the output impedance of the of the of the VNA. You don't have to, um, but I mean 50 ohm is the standard. And then you do your through. If you're going to do S21 and S12, you need to calibrate from the input to the output of the vector network analyzer. So if you just want Z11, the input impedance, then we use one port. If you want to do transfer gain or return loss, then Basically, you use both ports. This is a LT SPICE model that I used um, to show characteristics. Um, Griffin showed some of this yesterday as well. He was talking about Q factor and magnification, and you can see these on here as well. But first of all, the series resonance circuit. And this is your basic Tesla coil. It's, it's a series resonance. It's the one we all measure. It's, uh, it's the one that we measure with the... Um, with the signal generator and the field intensity, and it comes literally from the bulk properties of that solenoid. Again, the low Q and the high Q. So as the, as the resistance in the circuit changes, so the Q also changes. So, and the magnification also changes. So Griffin was talking about the bandwidth yesterday, and we can define that bandwidth. We can see it very easily in the in the, um, in the frequency domain. This was Colorado Springs in 2019. This was the matching unit they were using. This was a Dentron linear amplifier. I finally remember the name. 
It was a Dentron linear amplifier, um, one kilowatt, and it had what's called a swing link matching unit on it. So this is, this is basically two sets of coils, one swings out, and you, can, you essentially adjust the coupling um, between the two by how much they overlap. These tuning capacitors and stuff like that actually weren't in the circuit. It was only down, <laughs> down to the swing link coil. Um, the match was actually pretty good, so you see there wasn't actually need to offset it a great deal. Um, the, the, this is a great matching unit to, to have because it's a very wide range of things, that, uh, uh, impedances that you can tune, and you can put a lot of power through that. Okay, so if we look at the markers, let me get this in a reasonable scale. So reference level zero, 50 ohms per division. We look at the blue line. Let me just turn the phase off for the moment. The blue line is nice and flat. We'll spread the markers out. And now if we look at the details, let's bring this in so we can see it. So marker one at 3.5 megacycles is 49.85 ohms. At 73.6 megacycles, it's 50.01 ohms. It's flat enough. That's good enough for a, for a measurement. Okay, so the VNA is calibrated to the end of this wire. Um, I'm going to do a series fed measurement first of all. So I'm going to I'm going to remove the primary and put it away somewhere where it's not in coupling distance with anything else. So this is a single coil situation. Now this is a series feed. So I'm taking through this connector. I'm taking the center hot to the hot end of the base of the coil and the negative end of the VNA or the outer connection of the BNC is simply connected down to the generator earth and the generator earth just goes down to the line earth. I wanted to make a portable generator on the one hand because it's just so useful but I'd also said to Aaron that I need to bring it in his suitcase so I, need, <laughs> I, need, I needed to get it in the suitcase. I literally I did, I, I, I bought two suitcases and I put these in. Um, so I wanted an all-in-one generator which would give me, and I'll come on to the generator in the second demonstration and what, what is special about it. And I will take the tops off and you can, you can photo them and everything, it's all open source. Um, so anyway, going back to this, so this is the broadband characteristics of the coil and it already tells us a lot. There's a lot of modes we could be using here. Um, we, so what I'm gonna do is narrow it down um, so that we look at, um, I wanna go into detail in one of those characteristics so I'm going to say, go to about six. So that is, so what we're me measuring now, that big peak, I couldn't get it quite. I mean, I suppose I could just adjust it slightly. Okay, so I'm loading them. Okay, there, they're in the balance. They were in the balance condition again. So they are still interacting with each other over that distance. Now, sure, you're not going to couple too much power at that distance because the magnetic coupling coefficient is very low. But look at them. They've moved closer. They're not coupled so much. They are interacting with each other. It's still hidden in plain sight. If I take it out further, I can still rebalance it. Look at its sphere of influence. Its sphere of influence is actually huge. I mean, you wouldn't run it like that, but who knows? There might be some interesting reason to run it like that. Say, for example, if you're dealing with... Uh, somebody was talking about subtle vibrations in water, I think. No, you were talking about subtle vibrations. Um, well, this is an example of subtle vibrations going on, the two longitudinal modes interacting at a distance. Um, I mean, eventually, if you take it right away... just the primary. That's the longitudinal mode of the primary that's left. It's just that one coil over there, which it, it itself is a Tesla transformer. Okay, so it's very small. Um, let me turn that one off. It's just 300 watts. demonstrated here 
first time since it's been demonstrated um, since Eric Dollard in the 90s, the fractal fern discharge, which shows a very specific relationship between the dielectric induction field and the magnetic induction field. And we see that uh, that fractal fern discharge produces something which is closer to the natural order that we normally see um, uh, in the natural world. And that has two important conjectures that come from that. One is basically the natural order uh, is, is, is a fractal base, it's a self-similar, self-repeating. And the other conjecture that we make is that because of the choreograph pattern it produces over time, which needs more research, that there may actually be um, intelligence in the basis of electricity at a very deep level.